It is Sunday, Rainfire family. Happy, happy, happy Sunday. Welcome to Rainfire Church Online. My name is Joanne Rosario Condry, and I am so blessed to be a part of your spiritual journey, your walk of faith, your life with Jesus. We are a family in Christ, and we are so amazingly blessed to be part of your life. And we're so thankful that you're part of our life. Pastor Corey and I are just We are just servants of God wanting to bless you and help you grow in your relationship with Jesus. So come on in, make sure that you share, make sure that you let somebody know that we are live right now. We're in this amazing series. Do you know the Holy Spirit? I know you may have heard of the Holy Spirit. You may think the Holy Spirit is goosebumps. You may think the Holy Spirit is chills that go up and down your spine, but you know what? The Holy Spirit is a person. And I have felt this deep desire in my heart over the last few weeks to really get to know him in a deeper way. I believe that the day and the time that we're living in, we need the presence, the power, the knowledge of the Holy Spirit active in our lives like never before. Not because of necessarily what we need in a selfish way, but because of what God needs us to be in this day and in this time for our generation. We're an extension of the kingdom of God on the earth. And we have a work to do. You have a work to do. You are called by God to make a difference on the earth to make a difference in your family, to look like God. We have we have a job to do. We're not just here to just suck up air and pay bills and go to work. We are here to represent something that's bigger than all of us. And that's the kingdom of God. That's Jehovah God. That's Jesus who died on the cross for all of mankind so that we could be saved, so that we can be vessels for the Holy Spirit to work through. And so I just want us to know him more. I feel like it's important for us in this day and in this time. So this is part two. If you have not watched part one, which was last Sunday, make sure that you go to our YouTube channel and uh, find Do You Know the Holy Spirit? Part one so that you can be caught up. And I want to listen. We're going to do something a little different, a little special today. Somebody say today. I need you to put that in the chat today, today, today. Today, after our 11 a.m. stream, okay, after our 11 a.m. stream, we're going to have a Rainfire stream after party. And so we as a family are going to come together after the 11 a.m., not the 9 a.m., but the 11 a.m. stream on Zoom. It's a fellowship. Talk about the word. Talk about how it's impacted us, what the Holy Spirit showed us. I want to hear from you. Your brothers and sisters that are part of this Rainfire family want to hear from you. And so make sure to join us after the 11 a.m. in our Zoom after party, okay? And the meeting ID for that is 891-9579-5680, okay? 891-9579-5680. And the passcode is 1. One, one, and anybody is welcome to join. You don't have to be a member. You don't have to, uh, this may be your first day with us online at Rainfire, but I just wanted us to have a special way to connect because today we are not uh, in the building. We still have noticed that the numbers, the COVID numbers are super high in our city and we want to contribute to it, uh, to those numbers coming down. But we are also super excited to be able to kill two birds with one stone. And we have some surprises for you when you come back in the building. Okay. Somebody say expansion, expansion, expansion. And so father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for what you're doing in this house. We thank you that the vision that you have for rain fire, it is for an appointed time and it is coming to pass Lord Jesus. And we thank you God for every person that you've assigned to be connected to this house, that they would be able to grow, that they would be transformed. God, that they would come out of that position of victim and step into the position of a victor, of somebody who is victorious. And we just thank you, Father, because we are not here to just take off space, but we are here to be your children, to be your servants. Father God, to work for you, to make a difference in the world, to draw people to your love. Thank you for choosing us. And so speak to us as we continue in this series, because we want to know the Holy Spirit and we want him to be active in our lives. And so speak to us. We open our hearts to the word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's get into this. Do you know the Holy Spirit part two? Last Sunday, we started kind of coming in and talking just a little bit 
about the Holy Spirit. I know you may have heard about the Holy Spirit. Like I said, sometimes people think that the Holy Spirit is goosebumps or chills up and down their spine. The Holy Spirit is not a feeling. The Holy Spirit can produce a feeling in a person. The Holy Spirit can bring forth uh, a prayer language or speaking in tongues. The Holy Spirit uh, has been uh, exemplified as a dove or as wind or as fire. These are all attributes of the Holy Spirit, but that's not the essence of the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. You have the Father, He is a person. You have the Son, Jesus, He is a person, but then you have the Holy Spirit, who is also a person. And I want this person of the Holy Spirit to become real to us on a whole new level. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When I say thank you, Holy Spirit, I see in with my spiritual eyes, I see somebody who's helping me preach when I have to preach or who's helping me deal with, with challenges or conflicts in my life. I see him as, as an individual that is with me. We talked about that uh, in part one of this series, how the Holy Spirit is one that comes alongside you. Uh, Jesus referred to him as our helper. The Bible talks about him as our helper. And I, I will send a comforter. I will send a helper. I will send one to you that is going to help you. He said, it's to your advantage that I go so that I can send the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has been sent to us, the church, the body of Christ, to be our helper. And he is a person. And I believe that that the sooner we get to know him as a person and the sooner we see him as a person, we're able to give him the proper respect. We're able to give him uh, the regard and the honor that he deserves in our lives. I, I know that maybe out of ignorance, you may be ignoring the Holy Spirit, or you may be overlooking the Holy Spirit, or you may not even realize that he is present, that he's available. You may not even realize that he wants to help. You may be in, in, in the midst of a situation right now, and you feel so overwhelmed and so hopeless and so alone because maybe your family has turned their back on you, or maybe friends that you thought were going to be there are not there, and you're feeling alone, and you're feeling desperate, and you're feeling hopeless, maybe even suicidal. And God is saying, wait, hold on. Everybody else may leave you, but I sent the Holy Spirit to be your friend, to be your comforter, to be your your helper. And so when you're able to see him for who he is and understand that he plays a super important role in your life, it's going to give you a different sense of, of strength and of comfort and of hope, understanding that regardless of what you face and regardless of who turns their back on you at whatever moment, you're never alone. You're never alone. God promised that he would never leave you and he would never forsake you. But part of the way that he, he keeps that promise or fulfills that promise is that he sent the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a person. I just want you to say that. I want you to put that in the chat. I want you to understand that. This may be a new concept for you or it may be an old concept that needs to become more real in your life. The Holy Spirit is a person. When you talk about a person, okay, when I met Corey and we were starting to get to know each other, we didn't meet at first face to face. We met over the phone. We met uh, through, you know, through emails. And then we started talking on the phone. I didn't know anything about him. I didn't. I just knew that he's a nice looking guy. Right. Because I think my husband is fine. Forgive me. That's all I knew. All I knew is that's Coco brother. And he is fine. Right. Like we used to say back in the day, he is a good looking man. But I didn't know him. OK. He could have been a good looking man, but a terrible person, but he wasn't. The more that I talked to him, the more that I asked questions, we would sit on the phone for eight hours at a time. That's how we fell in love. We would sit on the phone just talking eight hours at a time from the time he'd get off the radio at night till the sun would come up in the morning and just talk. And that's how I got to know him. That's how I got to know the fact that he loved the Lord that he was really saved for real, that he, you know, that he was passionate about evangelism and about souls and about reaching people for Jesus. That's how I came to know him and knowing him caused me to love him. And in falling in love with him, when he asked me to marry him, I said, yes. Now, if somebody came up to me when I was single and was a complete stranger said, Hey, marry me. I would have been like, you crazy. I don't know you. Who are you? Right. But because I knew him and I had spent time talking to Corey. I fell in love with him and in falling in love with him, when he asked me to marry him, even though I I knew that it meant that I was going to have to leave my family, I knew that it meant that I was going to have to move from Chicago to Atlanta. I knew that it meant all of these big, huge changes, but I was so in love with the person 
of Corey, not Coco brother, but I was so in love with the person of Corey Condry, of who he was as a person, his heart, that I said, I'm willing to leave everything behind to go with this man to another city, to another state, and start a new life all over again with him. I was willing to leave behind everything that I knew because of what I had come to know in him as a person. That's, that's the, the closest example that I can give you about getting to know the Holy Spirit. He's a person. He has feelings. He has opinions. He has thoughts. And all of these things are proven in the word of God. And I want to share some of, some of his person attributes uh, today because I want you to understand. Wait a minute. He's a real person. It's going to change your life. The Holy Spirit is a person. He has attributes that only a person can have. And so watch this. The Holy Spirit is intelligent. The Holy Spirit has wisdom. Okay. Watch this. First Corinthians two, first Corinthians two verses 10 to 13 says, but God has revealed them to us through his Holy Spirit for the spirit searches all things. Yes. The deep things of God for what man knows the things of a man, except the spirit of the man, which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God, except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words, which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So even right here, the writer is comparing the wisdom uh, that the Holy Spirit uses to teach with man's wisdom. He's saying, listen, here you have the wisdom of man. But here you have the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, which is how he teaches us all the things that the Holy Spirit knows when he searches the heart of God. So the Holy Spirit has wisdom. He has intelligence. He goes into the heart of God and he searches the heart of God for, let's say, God's, uh, God's will for your life. And then he takes everything that he learns in the heart of God concerning you. And then he comes and he teaches you and he shares with you the things that God has spoken in his heart about you. That is amazing. He has wisdom. He has intelligence. Watch this. The Holy Spirit has feelings because he's a person. He has feelings. Ephesians 4 verse 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Do not grieve. What is it to grieve? Don't make, don't make him sad. Okay. And so, uh, there are times where I may have spiritual sons and daughters and I have, I have taught them something. This is how you live. This is how you move. This is how you, how you should dress. This is how you should talk. This is, this is the, this is the standard of who we are as sons and daughters of God. And then if one of my spiritual children or one of my natural children goes and does something that is against what I have taught them, and then I see them or I catch them or, you know, they were sneaking around when they did it and then they got busted. What, what does it do? It grieves me. What does it mean for me to be grieved? It makes me sad. It makes me sad that you did this. It makes me sad that you dishonored your body. It makes me sad that after I've taught you the word of God, you've gone and you've done the opposite of what I taught you. This is the standard and you've done the opposite. I feel grieved. I feel sad. I feel like you're not listening. Okay. The Bible tells us, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? That means that when I am taught by God and God teaches me through the Holy Spirit and he says to me, forgive uh, those that do evil against you. And when I choose to continue to be angry and to hold on to that anger and to that bitterness, as long as I'm holding on to that anger and that bitterness and I'm not being obedient to what I've been taught by God, I'm grieving the Holy Spirit. Because see, this is the thing. The Holy Spirit is with me. So when I sin, the Holy Spirit is present. If I get mad and I cut somebody, uh, 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 curse somebody out, the Holy Spirit is present. If I'm lying, if I'm stealing, when I know that it's wrong, the Holy Spirit is present. And he's sitting there. He's shaking his head. Okay. As a worship leader, if you, you know, sleeping around on Saturday night, but then you come and you stand on the pulpit to lead worship on Sunday morning and, and you say, let's lift up holy hands. And the Holy Spirit is standing there right there with you saying, how can you say your hands are holy when your hands were doing this and your mouth was doing that and your body was doing X, Y, Z last night. And you have not even come to repent or talk to me about making it right. And, and, and now here you're pretending like you have holy hands or your hands are not holy. And we're grieving the Holy Spirit 
We're saddening the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't throw us away, but the Holy Spirit becomes saddened and he becomes grieved because when we sin and when we are doing what we do, he's right there and he's saying, this is not what we do. This is not who we are. This is not who God created you to be. He has feelings. So learn to see him as a person. It's not about doing what's right in front of your pastor. It's not about, you know, following the rules when you know that the cop is driving right behind you. It's about us truly understanding, man, God, I just, I don't want to, I don't want to displease you. I want to please you because I don't want to grieve your Holy Spirit. You're a real person and I, I don't want to grieve you. So he has feelings. Let's get to know him. Let's, let's know the Holy Spirit and let's honor him. Let's, let's reverence him. Let's care about how he feels. Watch this. The Holy Spirit has a desire. He has a will. That's the reason why when I'm going to lead worship, I say, Holy Spirit, what do you want? What, what do you want us to sing? What message do you want me to preach? And I'll pray and I'll ask him because I understand that he's a person. He has a will. Ask him, should I go out on the date with this guy? Ask him, should I marry this person? Ask him, should I do this business deal? Ask him, should I take this job? Ask him, should I move to this other state? If it's not your will, God, don't close every door. Because the Holy Spirit has a will. What is the will of the Holy Spirit? The, whole, the will of the Holy Spirit is a reflection of the will of the Father. They're always on the same page. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are always on the same page. So he has a will. Look at this. 1 Corinthians 12 and 11 says, But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Here, this passage is specifically talking about how the Holy Spirit gives gifts to his children. So he gives his gifts to his children, to the children of God, that's us, according to his will. So he'll look at Sandra and he'll say, oh, Sandra's purpose is to uh, be a public speaker and, and, and do business. And so these are the gifts that she's going to need. She's going to need the gift of discernment and she's going to need, you know, a, a prophetic gift so that she can know what's going on. And, and the Holy Spirit will give us our gifts according to his will, which is the will of the father. And so he has a will. He has desires. That's so important. Watch this. This is it just messed me up when I was reading Acts 16 verse 6 it says now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia watch this they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia so here we see two examples where the Holy Spirit gives uh gifts according to his will but then here in the book of Acts we see that the Holy Spirit said to them don't go there and preach what do you mean I thought I thought Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel and make disciples and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, Jesus told them to go into all the world. But at that moment, in that season, he spoke to them and he forbade them. He said, uh-uh, no, it's not time yet. Don't go to Asia. He forbade them. He did not let them go. Sometimes the Holy Spirit is going to say no. And we have to learn how to honor him and hear him as a person and respect what he's saying to us. Sometimes it's no, sometimes it's yes, but it's all because he knows the perfect will of God for our lives, okay? The Holy Spirit prays. He's a person and he prays. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Holy Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession. What is intercession? Prayer. He makes intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. That is so powerful. When we talk about Jesus is at the right hand of, of the father making intercession for us. So we have Jesus at the right hand of the father interceding for us, praying for us. Then we have the Holy Spirit here with us, within us praying. We have prayer going on up there for us. We have prayer going on down here for us. The Holy Spirit making intercession for us. So he prays powerful. The Holy Spirit prays. The Holy Spirit does miracles. Acts 8.39 says, Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. You know the story, or maybe you don't. Let me not assume. Philip was... Uh, witnessing to an Ethiopian eunuch about the scriptures, about uh, salvation. 
and they stopped so that the man could be baptized. He wanted to be baptized. And when the unit came up out of the water, the spirit had taken Philip to another place, to another destination. And Philip, he basically, he disappeared. It was a miracle. The Holy Spirit does miracles. Okay. The Holy Spirit is a person and he can be lied to. Acts 5 verse 3. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself. The disciples were so in tune with the voice of the Holy Spirit that they knew that this man was lying. Say, you're not even lying to us. You're lying to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is a person. You don't like for somebody to lie to you. So why do we lie to the Holy Spirit? I, I, I was so blessed yesterday because I saw somebody that I hadn't seen in a long time and I, and I said to her, you know, I love you. I've missed you. You know, how have you been? She said, I'm not even going to lie. I've been terrible. And she just started laying it out just truthfully and honestly what she had been going through. And I was like, wow, how amazing and how powerful is that? She wasn't even trying to lie. She was just like, mm -mm, Pastor, I'm not even going to lie to you. This is what's been going on. This is what I've been doing. This is what's been happening. And, it, and yes, she's been going through a hard time. But she was just like, I'm not going to lie because that showed honor and respect. And that's how the Holy Spirit, he, he, he wants us not to lie to him. He wants us to be honest. He wants us to see him as a person and he wants us to know that he is present and he is there and he wants us to give him the rightful position in our lives. Okay. I'm going to give you this example. For example, you may have two people who are, who are married. And there are certain privileges that belong to a wife. And there are certain privileges that belong to a husband because those two people have become husband and wife. They're married. A wife can become angry with her husband when the husband does not honor her and regard her and give her the respect that is due to a wife. Same way, vice versa. It goes both ways. The spouse can become angry because the other spouse is not giving them the respect and the honor that is due to that position. Okay. So a wife, uh, should be, uh, should be honored and respected in this way. A husband should be honored and respected. I mean, a, a very plain way to say it. If, if either one of the spouses gives their body or their emotions to somebody else that the spouse is going to become angry because what you're not respecting me as your husband, you're not respecting me as your wife. You're not giving me the honor that is due to who I am as a person in your life. That's the same way that we do the Holy spirit. When we live our lives without talking to him and we live, our, I, I encourage you, I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to say it again, go and read the book once again, or maybe even for the first time, good morning, Holy Spirit. In that book, Benny Hinn talks about how he came to know the Holy Spirit as a person, how to include the Holy Spirit in your life, how to include him in your decisions, how to talk to him. He should be our best friend, even though, yes, we have to have community amongst one another and we should have friends uh, among the body of Christ, of sisters and brothers. And, and you may be close to your sister or close to a family member, but you should be the closest to the Holy Spirit because when you're the closest to the Holy Spirit, that means that you're able to be the closest to God. You're able to be the closest to the Father. My last scripture, John 14, 26, because the Holy Spirit is also a teacher he teaches us and he directs us. He leads us. John 14, verse 26 says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all the things that I said to you. So the Holy Spirit is responsible for teaching us and reminding us what God has spoken to us. I just want to know him. I want to know him more. I want you to know him more. And that was the purpose of the teaching today, for you to be able to see him more as a person. He has intelligence. He has wisdom. He has feelings. He has a will. He prays. He does miracles. He can be lied to. He teaches. He directs. Every feeling, every, every human feeling that we can attribute to, the per, to a person, we can attribute those same emotions and feelings to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can be grieved. The Holy Spirit can be made happy. I'm sure that the Holy Spirit can probably even laugh and be full of joy when he sees you 
walking in victory and walking out your purpose. My prayer is that we would come to know him and that he would become the most important person in our lives, the one that we go to first. Because when we go to the Holy Spirit first and we connect with the Holy Spirit first, that means we're going to God first because the Holy Spirit is the extension of God that was sent to us to be with us here on the earth. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for so many amazing examples that you placed in your word to help us see who the Holy Spirit is, to see his personality, to see that he has a will, to see that he has feelings, to understand that we should not grieve him, we should not sadden him, to understand that there's things that we can do to make him happy in the same way that there are ways to make you happy. I ask God that there be a supernatural revelation of who the Holy Spirit is in our lives so that we can come to know him better, so that we can give him the proper position and the proper respect that he deserves. Help us in this because we want to be empowered by your Holy Spirit to please you and to serve you and to honor you with our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I love you. If you want to know more about God and you want to connect to our discipleship classes, we need you to go to our website, brainfirechurch.org. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ and you say, I'm not saved, I'm not in relationship with God, I am not in right standing with God, I need to get my life back on track, reach out to us. We want to hear from you. We'll have someone call you and minister to you. We'll plug you into what we have going on for discipleship because once you surrender your life to Jesus, then you have to grow. And if you want to be a member, be it online or in the house of this ministry, go to our website, contact us, send us your information and say, I want to be a member. I want to be a part of what God is doing at Rain Fire. And that allows us to connect you with everything that we have going on in the house and on line. Okay. And so make sure to connect with us, make sure uh, that we have your information so that we can, uh, we can just serve you in a new way. And as I told you earlier, after our 11 AM stream, we're going to have an after party on zoom where we're going to discuss and talk about the message today. And that meeting ID once again is 891-9579. 5680 and the passcode is 111. Okay, so make sure that you meet us there after our 11 a.m. stream. Okay, we're all going to come together online, in house. We're all going to come together and just have a few minutes of fellowship and discussion and sharing together. Okay, it's time for us to give. We're declaring that Rainfire is a 100% tithing church. We are a 100% giving church. We are uh, just a prosperous and blessed church, and I'm so excited for you guys to be able to come back after we reopen in the next week or so, so that you can see all the amazing things that God has done through your giving. Somebody say expansion, your giving and you're honoring God in your giving continues to partner with this house. So we can continue to do the things that God has called us to do in this facility and also around the world. And so let's bring to the Lord our tithe and our offering, and let's declare together the blessing of God over our giving. Come on. Repeat this declaration with me. I am a tither. I am a blood-bought believer. And because of Jesus, I am redeemed. I am a tither. I am in covenant with God. And he protects me according to his word. So Father, I thank you for keeping me and covering me. Our house is blessed and our pastors are blessed. We are blessed with every spiritual and material blessing we need to build God's kingdom. We thank you for sanctifying us, purifying us, and prospering us. In Jesus' name, amen. Here at Rainfire Church, we offer several ways to give. You can check out our website, rainfirechurch.org, and click giving. You can also give using Cash App. Our name is dollar sign rainfire ATL. In addition, you can text the word rainfire to 77977. If you prefer, you can give using the Zelle app. You can find us by entering our email, which is info at rainfirechurch.org. If you'd like, you can send a check or money order to P.O. Box 6984. 
Douglasville, Georgia, 30154. Thank you, and God bless. I bless your seed. I bless your giving. I declare that you are prosperous. You are blessed. You are blessed beyond measure because you're faithful to God in the things that God has asked of you according to his word. Have an amazing, amazing day. Have an amazing week. Know that you are loved. If you need prayer, if you need support in any way, please go to our website and reach out to us. We want to hear from you. We want to know that you're there so we can serve you. Okay. We love you. Be blessed.